Wake up out of your sleep, wake up! I'm the librarian and I came to read. It's very ironic that I'm the one telling y'all to wake up when in all actuality I just opened my eyes moments ago and I said, you know what, I need to hop in front of this goddamn camera and let the girls know what's going on. Now the reason I just woke up is because my ass was so drunk. <laughs> I was so drunk last night. What are you talking about? Last night, April 19th was my birthday, and let me tell you something. The girls came out, we were twerking. I mean, I was I was getting my life so much that I barely, I didn't even take any videos or no pictures. Or, I mean, I took, you know, I had a picture of the outfit as is required at the pregame. Y'all already know what the T is. And I took this video because I guess my drunk ass saw that my flyer was on one of the TVs in the club. <laughs> A mess, but I had so much fun. Like, girl, another year of life survived it. I'm, 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 I'm still here. I'm still here. You know what I mean? And against all odds, society don't want me to be here. Society don't want a lot of us to be here, but we're still here, and that's worth celebrating in and of itself. Okay? So I had so much fun. Thank you guys so much for those of you who came out. Like y'all was snatching up them tickets the right the day the day before and on the day of the event. I said, girl, y'all y'all love to leave shit for last minute. <laughs> it was cute. I like I really enjoyed it, and it also encourages me to do more stuff like live and in person and stuff. The sky is the limit and y'all already know expand the brand is the motive. And speaking of things, since I'm still here, I'm still here, okay? Um, speaking of things that are not here anymore, it's Jason Momoa's beard. Sis, I was, I mean, I woke up and Jason was trending. I was like, what's going on? What's going on with my husband? You know, I'm very protective of my husband and things like that. Um, so when I saw what's trending, I said, you know, I need to see what's going on. Miss Jason Momoa, he done shaved his beard while he was doing it. I forget for what platform he did that shit for, girl. I, just, I see the videos. <laughs> uh, while he was doing it, he was talking about, oh, saving the planet. He was saying we need to move from plastics and start using aluminum because that's completely recyclable. And he's like, girl, we have to start recycling. So I thought it was an interesting message. If you're going to trend, because you're definitely going to trend if you're Jason Momoa and you shave your beard, okay? So <laughs> I thought it was an interesting message for your ass to be, you know you're going to trend, so might as well use the attention to bring awareness to something that he's passionate about so I'm um, you know kudos to you sis it doesn't even matter shaved or not shaved I'm still going to request that I take a seat on that face and that's just it that's just it real last fam give a fuck by the trade you know what I mean I had to channel the spirit of uh, <laughs> city girls or actually Actually, I'm channeling the spirit of Lil Yachty because the girl said, apparently, you know, the news broke. Oh, Lil Yachty wrote the whole city, the whole fucking song of Act Up uh, up until JT's verse. And I'm just, I don't know why it's so surprising. I guess people did. Neo, I don't know, Neo wrote Irreplaceable. Neo is not going to be on this planet for one day without reminding all of us that he wrote Irreplaceable. So I'm just, like, girl, you, you know that your faves don't rap. Like, you know they can't write no rhymes. Um, so why is it so surprising? We know that these girls, there are tons of writers and, and they're credited on these people's songs. It's not like it's a secret. So I, I don't know. I guess because the, the idea of hearing Lil Yachty say real ass bitch give a fuck about a nigga <laughs> is interesting to say the least. It's very attention grabbing, I'll say that. But I'm just like, that's what it is when you're a good writer, sis. Like you're able to write for different perspectives. He had everybody bop into that shit and that's it. I mean, he got a check, he could check cleared and that's and what's even less surprising than that is the fact that Young Miami needs that support. She needs the talent and skills of other writers or else um, <laughs> her raps would sound even more like her performances look, sweetie. And, and that's, <laughs> that's no shade, but Young Miami has said many times since I do not want to be a rap. I do not want to be a rapper. I, I heard that she wanted to be an Instagram model. I think that would have been perfect for her ass because the way that she's going up on these stages sounding like she don't want to be there, like she on punishment. Sound like somebody put her ass on timeout on the stage. Girl, I don't know, sis. <laughs> I don't know, girl. JT, be a herb and get out. Okay, sis, we have to talk about this Ancestry commercial. We have to. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna show the commercial because the girls are going to probably hit my shit with a copyright strike and I'm not in the mood to be fighting YouTube today. But let me tell you something. Ancestry literally put their ad dollars, put a whole campaign and a budget behind this motherfucker and greenlit and like literally they were just like, oh girl, we need to escape to the north. It was it was an interracial, y'all already know. People love to, oh my god, interracial, you know, so and they put it back in the time. I don't was it slave days, I guess they put that shit back. It was a black woman, a white man, and this white man is literally talking over her describing how they're going they're both going to have to escape to the north or some shit i'm just like sweetie number one your your ass will be fine in the north or the south your white ass would have been fine sweetheart number two what the hell <laughs> he was literally the woman the black woman was trying to speak and he was speaking over her so i just thought that that was a very ironic example a demonstration as to um the tone deafness of this whole thing in general you know what i mean number three y'all love to talk about the point zero 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 one percent that a white a white man would be respectful to a black woman especially back then in, the, <laughs> in them slave ass days what are y'all talking about y'all love to talk about that shit but y'all hate to shine light on the abuses that black people had to suffer back then and just like i hate this white savior complex and this revisionism that always goes on when it's talk when y'all talking about uh what happened back then says I mean, from that hidden figure scene when that guy was smashing down the, the um, bathroom sign, y'all saw that shit? That shit would not happen. They said, take your nigger ass to, it's cool that you're helping us get to space and shit, take your nigger ass to the other bathroom and sit your ass down. Like, stop with this revisionism shit, sis. It's not only insulting to us, but it makes your ass look so stupid. The fact that I know that there was nobody of color who had decision-making power in the room when y'all decided to craft this shit up. Because I'm telling you right now, a lot of times they put hard ass focus groups, research, they sit around, come up with mock-ups, even everything down to the copywriting. Like, girl, they have to sit down and plan this shit out. So the fact that someone brought this weird ass, inaccurate representation to the company, and they said, you know what, girl, we're just gonna push it out, means that nobody of color, no, no black person was sitting in there saying, hey, sis, you know, like, this shit ain't good. Like, y'all didn't do the research and if you did you did research in only specific audiences you didn't go to the ones that are currently dragging it right now so like ancestry.com that shit was really ugly that was ugly sis something that was not ugly however was monique and these adidas commercials now for those of you who get your life with childish gambino i'm sure that you enjoyed it as well but i was more focused on miss monique because she was i don't know the the talent and funniness the comedian jumped out um and these <laughs> she was literally i guess she's acting like she's Charles Gambino mama. I don't know, girl. And she was dragging the shit out of his ass. I mean, saying that he was built like a loaf of bread. It was just, it was a lot of things going on in that commercial, but Monique's talent, like I said, the comedian, it definitely did jump out and I was excited to see it. Now, something that I am not excited to see is uh, these politicians running around like chickens with their heads cut off in um, Washington, D.C. That's exactly, that's something I'm not looking forward to, girl. The Mueller report, uh, I guess a redacted version of it kind of came out. Um, the girl, over 400 pages. Um, the girls are sitting down here. The, on, on the alt-right, extreme conservative side, we have everybody saying, oh, girl, no collusion, no collusion. Donald Trump even put this shit up um, and Game of Thrones had to say, you know what, this is what Game of Thrones said. Though we can understand the enthusiasm for Game of Thrones now that the final season has arrived, we still prefer our intellectual property not be used for political purposes. So I thought that was interesting. He's still going to keep doing it. He doesn't give a fuck about what y'all saying because he's Donald Trump. But yeah, on that side, they're saying, girl, no collusion, even though on page 182 of the report, it says at the same time, if we had confidence after a thorough investigation of the facts that the president clearly did not commit obstruction of justice, we would so state. So I don't know what they're celebrating for. Um, I, I can tell you why they're celebrating. They're celebrating because on page 173, it said, but they have to have like, they have to use context clues and they actually have to have some level of comprehension. And if they did, they wouldn't be celebrating, but this is, this is why they're happy for the moment. On page 173, it says, in sum, the investigation established multiple links between Trump campaign officials and individuals tied to the Russian government. Those links include Russian offers of assistance to the campaign. In some instances, the campaign was receptive to the offer, while in other instances, the campaign officials shied away. Ultimately, the investigation did not establish that the campaign coordinated or conspired with the Russian government in its election 
interference activity. So they're saying they don't have strong enough evidence. And, and you have to prove a whole lot of things if you're gonna talk about like conspiracy and shit like that. You have to make sure that there is corrupt intent there. And, and I guess Mueller was saying he doesn't have enough information to say that there was outright corrupt intent. And I was listening to people talk, I was doing research and they were saying like the Nixon situation was different because they had tapes of him saying that shit directly. So there, so he was saying that he and he's not sure how this shit will stand up in a legal, based on the legal definitions of what they were investigating. But however, they said, girl, if we were convinced that this man did not do this shit, we would say that shit. Um, but they said overall, this is not an exoneration of him. Um, so they, on one side, they're, they're, I guess they're picking and choosing which parts to read like they do the Bible, and that's why they're happy. But like I said, if they had comprehension skills, they would understand that this report is just going to be used as a resource from the fucking, what, six committees that are investigating so much. So <laughs> this whole, this whole um, administration, while he's talking about game over, game over, game over, um, the game actually has just begun. Um, people are talking about whipping up articles of impeachment and we all know that it, um, I'm not sure if y'all, because I didn't even know this shit, like how the impeachment process works. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, they have to, um, any member of the house can bring impeachment to the fucking floor. The House of Representatives, they have to vote on that shit. If a majority, 51%, it moves to it moves to trial. And then that's when it goes to the Senate. The Chief Justice presides over it. House um, forms the prosecution and senators act as the jury and they need two thirds, 67% of senators to find the president guilty in order to impeach him. Now that's a whole process. That's a, you know, we can argue about whether we have the votes for that shit or not. But the fact remains that people are, I think people, members of the house, I don't know if it's AOC signed on to it too, and it, Warren was talking about it. People are really starting to talk seriously about this shit. So whether it passes or not, girl, at least some members of Congress try to do something about this shit, okay? And like I said, impeachment is not in, an encouraging res resolution to this shit because we have Mike Pence after that shit. So if y'all can't get all their asses out of it, it's it's going to be discouraging. But even even then, if we vote their asses out in 2020, it won't really matter. But I don't know. This is it's a lot of maybes and what ifs, and but the, definitely what's concrete about this Mueller report is the fact that the president was not exonerated. There have been multiple links to the Russian government discovered. Um, Sarah Sanders asked, she was also grilled um, when she, cause she went to the press one day, I forget what day it was, she went to the press talking about, oh well girl, file and rank members of the FBI um, lost lost hope and confidence in Comey and that's why the president was like, like all that shit she was asked by investigators about that statement and she basically, she said, she said that was a slip of the tongue, comments were made in the heat of the moment and it was based, those comments were based on nothing. So she admitted to investigators under oath that she lied. So you have all this lying going on in the press, to the press by these um, fucking press secretaries. You have multiple links established between the government and um, Russian government. You have um, Trump coming out here telling people to lie for him based off of actions that he did trying to obstruct. So it's just as more information comes out, people will be able to see the reason why some of these Democrats are going to be taking action. It's all around a mess and it's not surprising to me that Sarah Huckleberry Chen ass Sanders was lying every goddamn day and she continues to. She's a pathological liar. I'm not sure if she knows how to operate outside of those um, boundaries. But I guess you have to be one in order to work for this goddamn president. Recent reports have come out, and this is coming from Angie Ange in the morning. Um, she's based out of DC. Uh, so recent reports have come out that Howard University students feel disrespected by residents using the uh, yard as a dog park. But this resident thinks the campus should be moved. And I'll play a little bit of it. If they don't want to be within D.C., then move the campus. Um, he was just like, girl, if y'all don't want to be there. And of course, it's a white gay. Um, no shade, but <laughs> some, of these, some of these white gays are very... Uh, they they re represent a, a reflection of their heterosexual, you know, white counterparts. That's it. They use the same methods, same tactics, same oppressive ass um, rhetoric to talk about. Like, there's absolutely no reason. If your ass is a is not a college student, you don't need to be all up in their space like that, especially when there are parks around. And if the if the students, the black ass students, are telling y'all, hey, like we prefer it, this campus be for us. Um, 
then girl, all y'all have to do is go to the, one of the parks. But y'all feel like white people, like a lot of white people always do. Y'all feel like, well, this space is here. Why don't I have access to it? And and it's an open campus. Like y'all are so, it, it just goes back to your ancestors, how y'all saw something and you just demanded that you have access to, that you own it just because your ass arrived there, sis. That's not how the game works. That's not how the game works. Take your ass and y'all little ass shitty ass dogs to the park across the goddamn street and let these students study. That's it. On that note, I'm gonna go ahead and sit my ass down for the rest of the weekend. I wasn't even supposed to be working, um, but as you can see, I cannot stay away from it. <laughs> Thank you girls so much for watching, and if you're looking for your man, don't look too hard because he's right here with me having a good goddamn evening.